Wow, I'm surprised the this ceasefire resolution by the UN Security Council. Is it because Biden hopes to make it seem like he is in favor of a ceasefire and wants to help the Palestinians being genocided by the Israeli government because his approval ratings are falling because there's a lot of people who don't support Biden because he supports the Israeli genocide because Biden has been continually giving money and arms to the Israeli government even now while he pretends to be in favor of helping the Palestinians. In the last hour at the United Nations Security Council, a vote has passed calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. It's the first time such a vote has passed since the October the seventh attacks on Israel by Hamas. A significant moment then at the United Nations. Let's cross straight there. Jessica Lamazaria is our correspondent at the UN. She's standing by. I wonder um, when the United States will uh, be in favor of a resolution uh, requiring the Israeli government to stop their genocide in the West Bank as they decided to start stealing more and more land from the Palestinians in the West Bank. What, recently they just announced they're going to steal uh, almost 2,000 acres of land for development for Israeli settlers who are terrorists. For us now, Jessica, tell us a bit about what's happened today, particularly about the uh, U.S. decision to abstain here and not to veto. Mm, so they just abstained, uh, meaning that they're not going to vote yes or no, which is good because it is used. Uh, the United States that has like the sole power to veto any resolution if. The United States says no, then nothing happens, which doesn't make any sense if we want the UN to be like equal. One nation shouldn't be able to say no and uh, nothing happens when you have majority of the nations calling for a ceasefire. Well, the United States ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, explained her decision or the United States decision to abstain on this ceasefire resolution, saying uh, that uh, it, she wasn't entirely happy with all of the language in the resolution, particularly because it didn't uh, condemn the October 7th attacks. And she berated Russia and China for, she said, uh, still uh, not having condemned those attacks. Uh, however... I mean, how many times do people need to condemn Hamas before we start talking about the atrocities by the... Uh, Hamas is just an excuse used to excuse the Israeli government. Oh, what, you don't condemn Hamas, but you want to talk about Israel, blah, blah, blah. Like, everybody condemns Hamas. It is a huge deal that the United States allowed this resolution to pass. It's the first time that the Security Council... Uh, I mean, honestly, if the world didn't condemn Hamas, they wouldn't be uh, considered a terrorist group, unlike the Israeli government that arms and terrorists in the West Bank to go and kill Palestinians and anybody else, like Americans, because there was settlers that killed an American, but the settlers are not considered terrorists. I wonder why. Agrees and adopts a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. This resolution calls for a ceasefire during the Ramadan period, and then the language in it, which was modified uh, at the uh, in the final stages uh, upon a request from the United States, uh, to call also for a, a lasting ceasefire. Ultimately, originally the language said it was calling uh, for a uh, sustainable permanent ceasefire. Uh, the United States objected to that and changed that word permanent to lasting. But still, we have a strong, uh, short, direct resolution coming out of the UN Security Council. And there was a big round of applause, applause in the council chamber after this resolution passed.
you know the Israeli government is going to be pissed about this. Uh, since the UN has been against like the Israeli government committing their war, they've been calling for the UN to be disbanded. And a lot of the defenders of the Israeli government claims the UN needs to be disbanded because they're supposedly anti-Semitic for being against uh, a genocide, which makes no sense whatsoever because no one considers uh, being against uh, Russians committing genocide in the in Ukraine to be racist against Russians. As you say, Jessica, a significant moment indeed. I, I don't know if there's been any reaction yet. I'm thinking particularly perhaps of Israeli reaction. Right, well, we haven't heard the Israeli ambassador speak yet, but we're going to hear some strong words coming from him. Uh, right before, <clears throat> pardon me, right before the vote, uh, Israel uh, was said to have been putting pressure on the United States with Netanyahu reportedly telling the US that he was going to cancel uh, the visit of his delegation to DC if the US did not veto this resolution. The US did not. Oh, no, Biden. If you don't veto this resolution, I'm not going to come and visit your nation. Like, how is that a threat? Where is if uh, B.B. Hitler doesn't visit the United States? That doesn't, like, that's not actually, like, a threat. I mean, how much does that weigh? Oh, I'm not going to visit you if you don't veto this? That's like uh, Trump telling Mike Pence that, if Mike Pence doesn't uh, claim that the election was stolen and stuff, that Trump isn't going to be friends with Mike Pence. Like, who cares? And we expect to hear the Israeli ambassador uh, complain about this resolution.